Any questions? Could you repeat uh, the movie where the galaxies collide? Yes. How much disk space it took in the simulation to store in the database? Oh, I did not do the... Not the movie, but the no, 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 no. simulation I did, I, in the original. I did not do the calculations, but for Kaspringle... Approximately. <coughs> um, they have a very big computer and storage is an issue in all these astrophysical simulations. That's right. So it's you, not your model. But Am I right? Who have this model? This, this was done by Volker Springer. Oh. He is a, um, used to be a professor at IWR and HITS and is now um, has oh, now become the director of the Max Planck Institute. My question is, uh, well, anytime when we make modeling, we have to know some physical uh, laws and so on. Yeah. And what we have now? The laws are not so accurate, in, especially in engineering, as compared with what we can do in mathematics, the accuracy of our computation and all right. that stuff. Have you ever met this difficulty in your model? <coughs> yes, of course. So first of all, because there is no, there are no, um, Somebody, said, I think, I don't, I forget who, who it was. Said there is um, no perfect model. There are only models which are more useful and models which are less useful. Mm -hmm. So all models are incorrect. That's why there are models. A model for a cat is a cat, and this and the very cat that we are trying to model, not another cat. Um, so um, one way to deal with this is like experimental design and model calibration to um, avoid the most, well, the, the beginner's mistake, uh, which is often done careless, very carelessly. But then, of course, we do have, if we can quantify uncertainties, uh, maybe even find uh, sources of uh, model plant mismatch, as uh, from uh, what a term from the engineering, um, and uncertain parameters, if we can quantify how uncertain are the parameters, then one way would be to robustify simulations and optimization. So in order to avoid, for instance, um, safety critical inequality, violation of safety critical inequality constraint. Typical classical example in, in chemistry, exothermic reactions. If you violate a certain threshold, then it will explode, and has exploded already, like in Seveso 30 years ago, when dioxin was all over Europe. Um, so um, the third item is, because all models are only, at best, are useful and roughly correct, is feedback control. So perm you permanently estimate your state and trust your model at least for a certain distance in time and use it in order to uh, calculate uh, uh, corrections for slowly varying parameters the, the parameters for, for such a, uh, a flow reactor as we had there they do vary because the, there is what they call sintering so the, 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 uh, the pellets don't remain the same over the process so they age, they wear, there's wear, and there's always wear. Uh, so you can do feedback. Um, but this is essentially, these are the, the three ways in order to cope with this. We should not forget in classical control, um, we, have been, uh, we have been classical, not optimal control. We have had very good results on stabilizing situations with extremely coarse and simple models. So one way, like if you, drive a, if you drive a car, the most important thing is that if you turn your t steering wheel, that you know which way your car will go if you drive, <laughs> if you turn the wheel in which direction, and everything else can be adapted. So, I mean, PID control, for instance, is, is a very coarse model, 
together with feedback. Um, um, so, <clears throat> I, but I do think with all the physical knowledge that we have um, for about physical systems, nowadays also about uh, chemical systems, um, slowly but growing also knowledge about biological and biomedical systems. Um, so we're um, the modeling side improves constantly. Um, it doesn't mean that things get um, are becoming e um, simpler or easier uh, because the models all get always more complex every year. So that's the experiment experience. But you're totally right. Uncertainties is one of the and how to quantify uncertainties is one of the major research problems today. You are was when you were doing. Uh, uh, reaction rate constants uh, deduction from kinetic curves. Uh, <clears throat> uh, well, in some similar cases, I saw that there are many leaves of solutions, and it's not determinable which one of them is true. How did you cope with this problem in your situation? Um, for instance, this, this is true. I have it somewhere on the computer. This is this is true for the enzyme um, uh, uh, reaction. There are competing models, so it's not clear which or which of these um, reactions are actually reversible or not. So you have candidates, model candidates for a certain situation, and then of course you have, and that's an important question in experimental design. You have to come up with experiments which can distinguish between these models and distinguish means they sh you, you are going through um, areas of your solution space where they are really where they would react very differently so in order to be able to make a statistical assumption about which of the model is wrong you can, unfortunately, you can never prove any model to be right, <laughs> but, but uh, you can falsify models by experimental data, and you can very much improve this by optimum experimental design. Uh, now it is a, a great problem uh, arised uh, about uh, long distance um, uh, satellites. For instance, to uranium uh, or to uh, this uh, far from Earth yes. satellites. Uh, and, uh, so, uh, the problem of correction, the trajectory, for instance, for this uh, American or uh, European perhaps satellites, Galileo and so on. What uh, can you uh, say about the, this problem of correction of tra trajectories? I, I know th they said to me that. Even they don't use uh, uh, and even don't pro project some types of um, uh, engines for uh, uh, the, uh, because of that uh, this problem of uh, optimization of the trajectory of correction where they will correct this trajectory is not solved. So this is a actual problem. What can you say? I'm, of course, I'm not really an aerospace engineer, but what I've worked with ESA for for quite time. I've I, and I've been employed have have been an employee of German Aerospace for a year once, mm -hmm. um, but it doesn't make me an expert. Um, our con contribution to the problem is the identif the actual precise identification of the orbit we are in, and if and orbits change sometimes so after a while you will have to actually compensate that that's why like geostationary satellites do have a certain amount of fuel on board which is sometimes used in order to recapture uh, um, satellites that uh, landed landed you can say landed they, they <laughs> ended up in the wrong orbit <laughs> yes <laughs> um, so but um, the, I mean, they, they do have very precise attitude control on board, so they should be able to actually control their thrusters. 
in order to do whatever correction they, they need. So, what we can say is, then it's actually two for ESA. What they had in the operation center, their, their methodology with which they were actually solving the initial orbit determination, and orbit determination in general, was not worth a second look by a mathematician. I mean, it's not, just simply not very clever. Um, so, um, in that sense, and now the, this is um, a problem partially, of course, solved. Um, but I, how do we actually use it? Uh, I don't uh, for for correction of uh, like um, st geostationary situations. I I don't know. You said to me that Pantragian principle doesn't work. This is the problem of optimization. Pantragian principle in this situation. No, for the, uh, for the calculation of the orbit, probably it works, but for yes, correction of yes, process, yes. Should be in this situation, uh, it shows the instability. It shows the instability. Another question. Okay. Yeah, again, maximum principle in complicated situation on the computer is an Ill numerically ill-conditioned problem. Uh -huh. It is. Uh -huh. I'm a numerical analyst in, uh -huh. in my first grade, uh -huh. so that's my major uh -huh. expertise. I'm a numerical guy. Yes, yes, yes. And and I know how bad. How bad such Pontryagin principle uh -huh. boundary uh -huh. value problems they, they are. They also know it. They also know it. <laughs> <laughs> I and want to make a comment consisting of two parts. One is very particular and the other is general. About particular, the problem that you have discussed about wiggling, uh, it, you consider a robot that has two degrees of freedom, translation and rotation. And you showed, uh, it is a very nice example, I know about it, uh, it was very interesting, that sometimes it is necessary to use the second degree of freedom, however, we can uh, also work without it. I want to mention one similar example, which is to some extent dual to your example. If you are to rotate only mm -hmm. for a given angle, then you can uh, work without uh, translation. Right. But if the optimal solution, if no, time optimal solution, includes the translational motion that decreases the moment of inertia, then rotation becomes quicker and you can uh, f finish in a shorter time. Right. This example was uh, solved by m many, many years ago, about the same time mm -hmm. when you have uh, solved your example by Balotnik and other colleagues mm -hmm. in our institute. This was my particular comment. <laughs> and about general comment, I know uh, works of Professor Bock for many years, and what is uh, very special in this lecture, that it is a combination of a very wide viewpoint with very detailed and sophisticated solution of all particular problems. And in each problem, uh, Professor Bock describes a very uh, efficient uh, method to solve this problem. So this combination of general viewpoint and very elegant and very uh, detailed solution of particular problems. That is very, uh, very nice feature of this uh, research and this lecture. So I am very impressed and uh, I think that we had a, a brilliant lecture. Thank you very much. Oh. Too much honor, Felix. Too much honor.